David Lephart, L-E-P-H-A-R-T. All right. And now this one's for the interview. If you could just uh, say, hi, my name is Dave Lephart. Okay. My name is Dave Lephart. All right, Dave. Um, did you grow up in Muncie? Yes, I was born and raised in Muncie, as all my family were, yeah. the whole family. Did your father, uh, yeah, did you connect family connection early on to Warner Gear? Yes, my father worked here a couple different times. He hired in the early 20s, as I understood. But he also worked at Ball Brothers for a number of years, off and on. And if he'd be laid off, why he'd go back to Ball Brothers and back forth. And then during the war, he came to Warner Gear and stayed. He was a tool maker. And when did you get hired on at, at Warner Gear? I hired in in 1959 after I got out of the Navy and I stayed. I worked on production for about 12 years, then I got in a skilled trades apprenticeship and wound up a steam fitter, as called, or a pipe fitter, plumber. When did you finally retire? I finally retired and I have to think about that. <laughs> Well, I worked 39 years and four months, and and you say you did you did all kinds of jobs while at Warner Gear. Can you describe what, what, some of them in a little more detail? Well, I hired in in production. You just run a machine and you run various parts, and but the first few years you get an awful lot of experience running different kinds of machine. Wind up on labor inside labor, outside labor, sweeping floors, emptying coal cars. We used to do that because they burnt coal in the power plant. So I've done a lot of things like that. And how old were you at the start, when you started again? I know you were just- 21, I heard Anna. What were some of the good and bad aspects about some of the jobs that you did? Well, the good aspect with morning gear paid very well, but we didn't work all the time for a long time. You get laid off. And, but uh, some of the jobs were very hard and heavy. And years ago, we didn't have very good ventilation or very good heat system. Some of the facility was cold, and some of it was very hot. So it was uncomfortable in the summer and kind of cool in the winter. You, you mentioned earlier that you thought maybe your ears were also damaged. Well, there's so much noise in the whole facility, and they didn't put a big emphasis on that. In later years, you could get earmuffs if you wanted them, but it's so noisy you couldn't work in them and talk to somebody or communicate. When we first hired in, we didn't have to wear safety glasses, but they enacted a rule, and you had to have safety glasses to get in the facility. You're supposed to wear them all the time. Was that rule enacted because somebody lost an eye? Or? Well, I'm sure over the years there was a number of injuries for things like that. Um, now, you mentioned being laid off. What did you do during that time? How did you get by? Well, you do unemployment or got other jobs, which I usually went out and got other jobs because you didn't survive very well on unemployment. At that time, I think we got less than $30 a week. You have to go up and wait in line, see if you can find a job hoping you get back to Warner Gear because it sure paid a lot better. How, how much is, is a lot better? Well, when I first hired in, you wasn't taking home $100 a week. I told my wife if we ever got to, we took home $100 a week, we'd have it made. And did you get to that point? Well, eventually, took a lot of years, negotiations, get pay raises. Did the community, as a Warner Gear employee, were, was it something, was it, you know, the community recognize you as kind of having a, that preferred job in the community? Was it something that's, I'm a Warner Gear employee, was that something special? Oh, well, yes, because especially if you got laid off, they wouldn't hire you other places because they knew you'd go back to Warner Gear. I worked at Ball State for a while. They didn't want to hire me there either because I did work at Warner Gear. But they apparently they took a chance and... The wages wasn't quite as good, so I returned to Warner Gear. I had much better wages and benefits. Did you feel like you were ever resented within the community for being a Warner Gear employee and making more than other people? Yes, by people who didn't make that kind of wages, but you had Chevy and Muncie and a lot of factories, and 
Most of them were very good paying. All the facilities are closed down, shipping. It was Delco was here in Muncie, the battery plant, it's gone. Used to be a facility called Acme Lee, it's gone. Is that all the Ball Brothers, all those. Warner was the best. Yes, I think so. I think everybody else felt the same way at that time. Now, you mentioned the union and, and it getting uh, negotiating. Well, you always had to negotiate. As I never was the, uh, at the bargaining table, but we always kept in touch what we were trying to achieve, you know, better income, better benefits, retirement benefits, sick pay, et cetera, hearing aids, dental care, glasses. And we achieved all that at one time, but then they started taking them back again. How do you feel? So you feel? How do you feel the union represented your interests? At least, did that change over time? Well, I think they done a very good job, because the company didn't willingly give us these things. I mean, it was negotiated, and I sincerely feel that if they weren't making a profit, they would have never give us those benefits. What? Uh, what kind of? What kind of role did the union play in your life? You said you weren't. You weren't real active but you did, you did keep track of things. Oh yes, I went to union meetings on occasion, kept track of things, but some people were just, they like to be a representative or stewards or committeemen to set in these negotiations. But I think as a rule, most of the people were interested definitely in what the union was doing and stuff. We used, the union eventually bought a facility and we had a park you could go out there on weekends. They had a swimming pool, different courts, basketball courts, volleyball courts. And a lot of people participated in that. You know, got more active in the, the union and what they could do for you. Now, did you and your family, I, I, can you talk a little bit about your family? You've got kind of an interesting story. Um, well, yes, we used to go out there quite often. We go out on the weekends and swim. And, Took picnics, played volleyball, basketball, just went out and enjoyed it. That was the idea of it, have a place to go to. And you didn't have to pay to get there. How many people in your family worked at Warner Gear? Well, at one time, it was my father and nine brothers. And later on, a sister came to work. But at one time, there's 11 boys in my family, and we all worked here at one time or another. In that large factory, did you actually see your family uh, oh, yes. every day? Oh, yeah. Took a lot of harassment from the other people, jokingly. Uh, back, back to the kind of labor management. Uh, how, would you, how would you describe the relations uh, between labor and management? Um, were there, was there always animosity between the two? Were they always... A, always attention there or, or were there good times where, where labor or where management really seemed to be you know uh, understanding and, uh, of, of the you know, labor's needs kind of a hard question to answer <laughs> to tell the truth. I mean yes there was good relationships a lot of times but there was friction between because you know, things that the people wanted or felt like they should have and we didn't get for, I could say for a long time, I worked in an area that was very, very hot and we didn't have adequate ventilation or cooling. So they finally bought some fans. We had to walk out a few times, said it was just too hot to work. And, and it was, when it gets over 100 degrees in a facility, why, that's awful hot to be doing heavy lifting and the environment was, well, dusty and dirty because of the machining processes were being done. But eventually they insulated the roof, put up big fans, and it was a lot better. But you can't air, air condition a facility like that. It's just too vast, too vast. Nowadays they do, but back then they didn't. Hey, you participated in some strikes. Could you, could you talk about some of those? Well, I think maybe one or two, but we just stood picket duty while they were still negotiating and finally come to terms. We'd have to stand picket on, you know, given period of time to get your strike benefits. Um, how, uh, 
how did how did working at Borg Warner affect your family life? Are are you married? Did, did yes, I was married. I had two children. I've been married fifty one years. That so must have been good. <laughs> well, yes. Or I wouldn't be here. <laughs> no, it was very good. We had a good but we made good wages and things like that. Overall, it was a good place to work. Everybody hated to see it go, but like everything else, it went by the wayside. All the factories and months have gone, going out of the country, in my opinion. What do you think that's going to do to Muncie as a community? Very obvious what's doing right now. It's on the way down. Homes are up for sale. A lot of people's filing bankruptcy, and not only because of Warner Gear, but all the facilities that's left, all the good paying jobs. What kind of things did, um, did poor Warner workers do for the community outside of work that might be missed? Uh, other people have talked about blood drives and, and United Way. Oh, well, they were pretty active in United Way. A lot of the people used to belong to it. And, the blood banks, I belonged to the United Way and contributed a weekly percentage of your income and belonged to the blood bank. I belonged to it for many years. I had about 11 gallons of blood that I donated. All my brothers seemed to have belonged to it too. A lot of people did. It was just kind of community orientated, you know, do things to help other people. Back, back to your brothers. Was it strange having all your family members working there? No, I kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, right. we, I mean, like I say, we took a lot of harassment from co-workers and things like that, but we got along as overall. It just, you know, you're one of the left parts or another one coming in, things like that. But I think it was a unique situation to have a family that size working all at once in the same facility. So there weren't other other families like yours? Some, yeah. Because at one time, Warner Gear hired family members first. In fact, when I hired in in 59, there was a very large line two blocks long. They stepped out and said, if your mother or father doesn't work here, we won't take your application. I think they found that family members were good employees. Stuck together, worked together. Was that actually in the contract? No, not to my knowledge. It was just uh, an understanding? Just an understanding. But there was many people that had a brother worked here, and then later when they hired women, why women, wives came to work. When did they start hiring women? I can't really say. I don't know for sure. I'd say middle 60s. Is there any tension there when the women when women did come in the factory or my oh I'm sure there was a lot of people felt that you know facility like this wasn't the best place for a woman to work it's hazardous dangerous in some places well we've we've really actually touched on most everything that I that I had planned for today is there anything that that you would like to add that you'd like us to know about working at Board Warner, about the closing, and, uh, and how that's going to affect the Muncie community. I know we talked about that a little bit, but is there anything else you'd like to add just to just to wrap it up? Oh, I'm sure everyone has their own opinions and thoughts, and felt that I don't know why industry left Muncie. I mean, all the facilities, any manufacturing. I can't really say. I think it went with a trend. They left the country looking for cheaper labor. Of course, a lot of people think the corporations were making a lot more profit for the upper echelon, you know. But it's happening all over the United States. I mean, just look around, watch the news, and you'll see it. I, now, I guess one more question I might have is as a retiree, are you are you pretty involved with the retire with other board Warner retirees? You still you still maintain this kind of camaraderie between you guys? Well, we did until they actually closed and the unions 
not a long, no longer. We used to have dinners, retirement dinners, and we always attended. There was a good turnout of people coming. It's good to see your old friends and people you worked with. Of course, a lot of people my age are deceased. They're gone. So I'm going to miss that. I think any place will, you know. All right. I think we've got uh, got everything I didn't plan to ask. So right. I guess we'll move on to the next. All right. And we'll keep you around if you're willing to uh, to maybe uh, reminisce with your brother and your brother-in-law, right? Yes. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome.